I got a very special guest. I am with Danielle Bigman. Um, welcome to the DTA interview. So can you tell everyone who's watching at home, who's in this group call right now, like who you are, what do you do, and how long you've been with the DTA? Hi, everyone. I'm Danielle Bigman. Um, I am a family nurse practitioner um, in a rural community hospital in New Mexico, which is in the state. Um, I've been in the DTA for the last 16 months, so I joined about March of 2023. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sure. Nice to meet everybody. Nice to have you here. <clears throat> I'm just surprised it took us so long to get on this. Um, I uh, asked some of the leaders, like, who should we interview? I'm like, we should interview our six-week summer shred winner. I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. Let's do it. So we had 10 people join our six-week challenge a few months ago, and Danielle lasted. They all did amazing, but Danielle was one of the 10 that uh, made it to the end of, like, just ticking all the checklists, showing up, getting the probably the most outstanding transformation in the due process as well. So let's circle back. Um what made you decide to join the Dream Team Academy? I was tired of losing the weight and then gaining it all back. So I was going on that teeter-totter back and forth. Um, so I take a lot of vacations because of what I do. It's a way for me to like disconnect from, I guess, my day-to-day -day life. And we hear a lot of like depression, dealing with like chronic illnesses. So it, it, it stacks on one another. So it's a way for me to like reboot my mental health so that I don't start being grumpy and I guess getting burned out in healthcare. Yeah. So I was on that. Um, I was also like not really sure what I was doing in the gym. I was mostly a cardio bunny, which means like I was running six miles a day, about five to six days a week. Um, so yes, I was able to lose the weight right away after coming back on vacation, but then I would go on another vacation and then gain it all back. Um, and then I didn't really know what to do in the gym. And there's just so many like um, Instagram influencers out there that I just didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very relatable. Cardio bunny trying to lose off all the weight. Every time you go on vacation, um, you put it back on, you come back off. It's like this vicious cycle. So um, were they your main struggles prior to joining? Like, is it not knowing what to do in the gym whenever you did follow something, like the weight would come back on and it's ultra confusing, especially on Instagram where everyone that looks good is now a coach. So is that like the main struggles it, that you had? Yes, it was. I just didn't know what I was supposed to be doing in the gym. I needed a routine other than the cardio. And I was a little afraid of those um, machines and all. Yeah. Mm. So it was intimidating. I would, I would assume yeah it was intimidating so over here me and joe doing videos in the gym teaching people how to fix their form what, what made my instagram account like stand out to you where you wanted to like reach out to me um so prior to hiring you i had a coach who was online he was one of, I guess, maybe somebody newer who gave me workouts, but didn't change them or augment them to what I wanted and what I enjoyed. Um, so with him, like my weight had pretty much plateaued and I had stayed there for a few months. And when I tried to reach out to him, like um, I didn't get like the feedback that I needed or wanted. So I was following you and Joe on Instagram for at least a couple of months, kind of looked into like what you had done or what's on your Instagram and then kind of like looked into other things online. Um, so once I decided like, okay, this, this guy seems legit, like he has the credentials. I don't know if I've ever told you that. 
Um, then I reached out to you and asked like, Hey, this is like where I've been, what I've done. Um, I just need like a routine that way I don't have to keep questioning my exercise routine. Um, yeah. So that's how I reached out to you. Got it. That makes sense. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Well, credentials do matter because guys, mm -hmm. there's so many people that look amazing and just because they look amazing doesn't mean they have the license to coach you and teach you and train you. Um, just because you can do it for yourself doesn't mean you can do it for others. That's why there's qualifications. That's why there's nutrition courses. There's training programs. Um, yeah, even prior, Danielle, I know off topic, but like I had two gyms back in Australia. And if it wasn't for COVID, I'd probably still be running them. So COVID shut the gyms down and I went online and I could practice my expertise online and reach more people more people i didn't know it was going to turn into what we have now but I'm, I'm very grateful for whoever was looking out for me um so yeah so okay now how much weight were you at the start in february last year like what were you weighing and where are you what are you weighing now so i was 137 pounds um around the end of february of 2023 and then now I'm down to 112. So I've lost a lot of weight. Lost. I have yet to go shopping and buy smaller clothes. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting just to see what happens and see if I'm able to like keep this course. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Okay. When's the last time you were 112 pounds? In high school. Yes. So about... 30 years ago. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. yeah, yeah. That's really so cool. I know it's really cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do people say? Like friends, family, like what do they, tell, um, what do they say about your transformation? So I get a lot of criticism at work. Um, I guess you would call it criticism. Um, they tell me like, you're losing too much weight. What are you doing? Like you should try to eat these things. So as a healthcare provider, like we get a lot of on the go snacks and these on the go snacks are not very healthy at all. So we get a lot of donuts, pastries, cookies. Um, and that's just something that comes with it just because like these are, I guess, easier for people to buy and bring to us for, um, as a thank you gift. Um, we also have like a candy drawer is what I call it, where people just bring candy and stick it all in this drawer. So if we don't have time to eat, then we resort to the drawer to, to keep going for the rest of the day. Yeah. So when I started the DTA, it was really hard to get away from those. So over the last like maybe six months to eight months, I've like avoided overindulging in those things. Donia, that's tough. I used to work in a um, <clears throat> a call center. So even though I was training six times a week, that didn't stop the amount of pizzas and birthday parties that were happening every day at a call center, hundreds mm -hmm. of people celebrating. It's like, if you don't eat the donuts or the snacks, you're not part of the cool crew. It was, it was very difficult. So for you, this is new information to me, like having criticism from work, people telling you, what to do um sounds like you haven't been bothered by it because you're still crushing it um what was your biggest motivating factor to stay disciplined on your journey despite the people trying to get you off your journey despite all the little snacks at work that are like in front of you you know they're not healthy but it's like you know a social thing to do like what was your why uh i enjoyed the challenge of trying I <laughs> going to the gym every day, hitting new PBs. Um, I think I just got stagnant in my life where it was pretty routine every day to do the same thing. So adding like the workout into my routine, it was something like I looked forward to doing. Um, home life, like I get a lot of like, you spend a lot of time at the gym. We should go here. We should go there. Let's do this. Or from the boyfriend, I get, you're on vacation. Are you still going to eat that way? You're still eating your diet food. 
but I usually will tell him like, this has become like my life. Like this is not a diet anymore. Like I feel great when I eat green leafy vegetables and protein all day, rather than reaching for that croissant or pizza and that type of stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. So that's I, all I tell them. And then they, they back off usually. Mm, and, but they, when I do eat out, like I do, I feel tired and groggy. Yeah. So it's not something that I enjoy doing. I'd rather go home and cook. Yeah. That's a complete lifestyle. Uh -oh. It's amazing. Um, so for those who don't know, we hold community challenges in the team. Um, we hold a challenge every single month. Like Danielle's won two challenges right now. So we're our last challenge. Um, two months ago, we had a six week challenge for the whole community where 12 people participate. Um, Danielle won that. Um, but you were up against some pretty diligent, disciplined women. Like they're very focused. And I could mm -hmm. see like there was a race to the end. And I remember speaking to the leadership team talking about who's going to be rewarded the winner? Who's going to be rewarded the winner? And it was like a two week discussion. And it's crazy because we're all competitive too. And like mm -hmm. for you, now that you know, crowned the winners of these challenges, like what was your mindset going into the challenge? It was a challenge, Pat. <laughs> yeah, I <could> do that. <laughs> so Yes, it was a challenge. And then like, um, I guess I hit a plateau in my weight. I was about 115 and I couldn't get the scale to budge. Although you tell us, do not focus on the scale. Do not focus on the scale. But I, I did focus on the scale a little bit. So when I signed up for that challenge, I was looking at breaking that plateau. And I did it about yeah. a week into the challenge yes yeah you did you know she's very consistent guys i'm not just saying that but uh when she did the challenge it's like not even being more consistent it, she just took it up a notch so when you tell me you love the challenge not only will you love the challenge like you um commit to the challenge and you see it through because people love challenges but a lot of people don't see it through so what's the mindset for seeing through the challenge? Is it because you want to be a winner? Is it like, I want to try, like, I want to dig deep into, because a lot of women are watching and they're like, okay, well, I, I have challenges all the time, but I don't see it through. I don't get to the end. Like what gets you to the end? I guess it's just the fact that I was able to complete it and just to see if, I don't know, just to see if, I guess, um, I, I guess I looked at it as a personal challenge to see if I would be able to get to the end of breaking that plateau in my weight. Mm. Um, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what were your expectations coming into this? Cause I know before, like you've tried, like you had an online coach before that he wasn't changing up your workouts. So you might've had some skepticism trying like an online coach again, even though you've done some of your research, you thought I was a good fit. Um, but what was your expectations coming here? And like, are you happy now? Like with the results that you have, I feel like I already know the answer to that. I feel like you want more, but <laughs> like what your expectations, like what was it before coming here? I wanted to work on fat loss and to tone. Um, and I knew that I needed more accountability in my life. So you would be able to help me with that. Um, and on top of that, like it's like exercise increases my energy. It also helps me sleep better. Prior to that, I was not, I did not have any of that. Like I would just feel tired and sluggish all the time. Um, and by working out, like I was able to hit the main things, plus learn more about nutrition because like in school, like they don't tell, talk to you about how important protein is, um, and these other macronutrients that we should be having. So like prior to the DT, I was eating a lot of salads with chicken. Um, and then on the weekends, that's when I would fall off. And just kind of eat whatever I wanted to, just because like I was so strict during the week with my nutrition. Mm. Yeah. 
Got it. Okay. What are some of the things you do differently now? Like maybe it's your, yeah, you talked about nutrition, but maybe some habits, some, your exercise routine, like what are the exercises you were doing before coming into the DTA? What are some of the exercises you're doing now? Um, so as far as what I'm doing differently, I'm drinking more water for sure. So I try to drink three liters of water a day. Um, sometimes I'm a bit shy, but, um, most of the time I hit the three liters a day. Um, I'm eating more protein. Um, I'm also lifting weights, which I wasn't doing prior to the DTA. I was only doing like the running either on the trail. I was also hiking more during that time. So a lot of walking usually, but that was only on the weekends. And I was also doing, what is that? The elliptical as well. So just nothing but cardio, I feel like. Yeah. Mm, so all cardio and that's cardio. like going, all the, card, the, all the cardio machines in there. I've seen it. Like what's the most disheartening thing, Danielle, is sometimes when you go to the gym, you see people in the cardio machines that have been there for years and they look exactly the same. They don't know any better too. It's like the most comfortable place to be in that cardio room. You just go on the cross trainer, you move your legs, move your arms, you burn a bit of calories and you're like, oh, I'm exercising. But a year later, it's like, why is other people looking a lot better than me and I'm still running the same race? I can get very disheartening. So what are some of the exercises that you're doing now that you love that you can see that's actually working for your body composition? So we, I have a love-hate relationship with lunges. <laughs> I never like to do lunges, but I feel like that's giving me, I guess, the good results that I have. Um, I'm also... I like to do the lateral arm raises. Um, I usually will like gravitate toward the cable machines and I'll do like face pulls or lateral pull, pull downs. Um, and then I like to do the cable, what is it? The, the isolation exercises for your triceps. Yeah. Uh, the single arm triceps extensions. Yes, I actually enjoy that. I don't know why, it burns. I just do. It, it definitely burns, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I also do exercises on the Smith machine. So that can entail like the hip thrust as well as like doing the squat on the Smith machine. So like the deep mm -hmm. squat. Yeah. Transitioning from all the cardio exercises to all these, you know, physical weight training exercises now, was there a bit of like a, a learning hump where you had like some difficulties getting through that? Uh, the correct form. That's mm -hmm. important. Um, so we have at the gym that I go to, there's usually a trainer that goes around and I will usually stop them and ensure that like I'm doing the proper technique. Um, this trainer has recently left, so I haven't been able like to do much of that anymore with him. And he was always open to it, even though like he was just passing through on the way to the bathroom or whatever. Um, the other thing is like, when I first started, I was so used to like gauging my workouts based on how sweaty I was. So with the weight, I don't get that sweat as I was doing with the cardio. So that took a bit of time to adjust. Um, so, yeah. That's interesting. I want to say on that something that uh, is very important. There's a lot of new people in this Zoom chat that's listening to this interview right now. And I know Tatiana went through the same thing. Just because you're sweating doesn't necessarily mean your body's changing. Like I could walk in the 55 degree dude's uh, Dubai heat and I could say to myself, I did 30 minutes of exercise. I did nothing. It's just hot. But it, mm -hmm. for some reason we equate sweat to yeah. Uh, calorie burn but weight training burns more calories not just in your session but the after burning effect afterwards so glad for you to um, amazing for you to share that so everyone can learn and understand that like not just them you know so okay cool now <clears throat> do you have any tips for anyone that needs to keep up with, it, with their nutrition like i know that you travel a lot i know that you're like you're always like traveling. So how do you stay consistent with your protein, 
your snacking um, on a fitness training? I try to reach for protein snacks. So that took a bit of time to get used to. And I felt like at the beginning when I was starting my fitness journey, it was just harder for me to find protein. Um, and they're usually more expensive. Um, so I usually will do like um, yogurt um, and you can just buy that like at the airport or wherever you're at. Um, I'll also do like jerkies. So beef jerky, turkey jerky, that kind of stuff. Um, cheeses, so slices of cheeses, sometimes you can find, I love pickles and plus they're filling. So I would usually, um, get that. And then it just took a little bit of time to do some research. So that's what I do now. So before I, if I'm going to like Starbucks, like you can get the spinach wrap that has 19 grams of protein. Plus you get like your black coffee which I usually will drink. Um, it took a bit to get rid of like the half and half creamers. Yeah. I wasn't a big like latte person or frappuccino person. So I didn't have to like um, detour too much. Um, and then what other things do I snack on? I think those are the main things that I snack on when I'm on vacation. Um, yeah. Recently I started packing my protein drinks. Yeah. which I think I had reached out to you and was like, what do I do? Because I'm not hitting my protein when I'm on vacation. So you're like, well, pack your protein drink, which should have been a no brainer, but I did not think of that. Um, yeah. So it, it took some adjustments and time to adjust to all of that. Mm -hmm. But now I try to do like leaner cuts of meat. So a lot of chicken, um, I'll also do like the leaner red meats as well when we go out to dinner and then, um, with sides of like greens of some kind, and then a little bit of like complex carbs. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I love that. Um, now it's very interesting. You talk about Starbucks. I've just noticed, noticed recently, Danielle, that, uh, most popular cafes or food, um, fast food places, they actually have the calories and the protein amount too. So mm -hmm. I was at Starbucks, I was getting worked on because I want to get a house and like there's got egg bites and the egg bites is like 150 calories with eight, 18 grams of protein and like four grams of fat. I'm like, I just have this with my black and it's just simple. Whereas a lot of people, they don't realize it's there, the option's there. They'll just have their, you know, frappuccino with two tablespoons of sugar with their, I don't know, a little donut or something. And starting your morning with like 40 grams of sugar and then wondering why you're craving sugar all day. I mean, common sense isn't very common, you know, and it's everywhere too. Like they don't, they don't really educate you this, like you mentioned, like educate everyone on this in high school. So it's good for you to uh, understand that. Um, all right. What advice do you have for anyone that's stuck right now? Someone that's wanting to lose some weight. They've tried all the exercises. They're, they're in the cardio rooms like you were and they've done some training with personal trainers, but they feel stuck. They didn't feel like it was customized to them. Like what advice would you have to anyone who is looking to get out of like a plateau? Your health as well. That's the main important thing. Yeah, so what you feel your body is as important as what you're doing um, to it. Um. So as a healthcare provider, I see a lot of, a lot of this at work, obesity, type two diabetes, hypertension. Um, my family has a strong history of diabetes, so I don't want to go down that road. And over the last, like, I don't know, three to four years, I've been diagnosing like 30 year olds, even 20 year olds with type two diabetes. So I think that's my drive is like, I don't want to do that or I'm going to put it off for as many years as I can. And I think that's why like I had to do a whole, like not a whole 360, but maybe a 180 on my exercise and my nutrition. So um, exercise for, for um, energy, it'll help you improve your sleep. Um, it'll help improve your mood and then you can take care of others if you take care of yourself. Mm. 
Beautiful. I appreciate you for sharing. And last question, um, would you recommend the DTA to your best friend? Um, would you recommend the DTA to a stranger? And if, if so, why? Yes, I would recommend you guys. Um, it's a very motivating community. Um, I've learned a lot about my nutrition and that is like the stepping stone of all of this. On top of that, you're able to incorporate what you love into the gym. So if you don't like certain exercises, you're always like able <laughs> to message Pat and he'll change them for you, which I've done multiple times. I don't like this. Stop doing it. I don't like lunges, but I know like that's how I got results. So I had to push through it. Um, and I, yeah, so I've learned a lot. Danielle, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I'm sure this is not the last time and uh, keep crushing it where we're still on your journey, even though you've accomplished so much, I can see like you love a challenge and I love giving challenges away. So it's been a joy working with you. So thank you for trusting in me and helping you uh, grow and be the best version of you. Thank you. Done.